For the proponents of the non-prophetic indwelling view, Acts 5.32, as we have been stating for the last couple of episodes, is a critical text. The argument for the non-prophetic indwelling view is often made in this manner. Number one, every Christian receives the gift of the Holy Spirit at baptism, Acts, 5, Acts 2.38 rather. Number two, the gift of the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit, and so therefore the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Number three, this blessing is given to every individual who obeys God, per Acts 5.32. Number four, the spiritual gifts of the Spirit outside of the apostles in Cornelius were only given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, based on Acts 8.18, a verse we mentioned, I believe, in the last episode. Number five, the first instance of the apostles laying hands on Christians occurs not before Acts 6.6. 6. Number six, so therefore prior to Acts 6.6, 6, those who had obeyed God had been given the Holy Spirit, Acts 5.32, but only the apostles demonstrated any prophetic abilities based upon Acts 5.12, which was a couple of episodes ago. So in conclusion, this argument states, the manner in which the Holy Spirit was given to the saints based upon this verse 5.32, it must exclude all prophetic abilities. Now, we will look at the laying on of hands that occurs in Acts 6.6 6 in just a couple of episodes. However, before we wrap up 532 in the next couple of episodes, we need to make sure we understand this. If this line of argumentation about the non-prophetic indwelling is true, then there can be no reference to prophetic indwelling beyond the apostles between Acts 238 and Acts 66. You see, if even the smallest possibility between those two points exists, for the language describing the work of the Holy Spirit to include prophetic abilities, then the power of the argument is lost. In other words, Acts 238's gift of the Holy Spirit cannot have the dual nature for which many argue. It cannot refer to both the, an ordinary measure, a non-miraculous indwelling, and a baptismal or laying on of hands or miraculous measure of the Spirit. The Christians, having been given the Holy Spirit by, by the words of Acts 5.32, must be a completely separate giving than any prophetic giving which occurs later. The Christians that are full of the Spirit in 4, 31 through 33, and the seven men full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom in Acts 6, 3, cannot be full of those blessings in any prophetic manner at all. The importance of this cannot be stressed enough. If one can know that Peter's promise that all Christians would receive the Holy Spirit at baptism excludes prophetic abilities for all time for all people, it cannot be the case that one's receiving the Spirit at any point after Acts 2 is suddenly now the expression of the, of the Spirit's prophetic gifts. If Stephen's being full of the Spirit in Acts 6.3 is certainly and absolutely devoid of prophetic power in Acts 6.3, it cannot be the case that when he is said to be full of the Spirit in Acts 7.55 and now suddenly can see Jesus in heaven, now all of a sudden being full of the Spirit includes the prophetic can't have it both ways. This doctrine has a very significant textual problem with the way they make use of the idea of the giving of the Holy Spirit. We'll continue this thought next episode.